Now, it is then uh, three months ago since I stood here on set telling you, our viewers, that after weeks of build-up, Russia had invaded Ukraine. And since then, of course, thousands of people have been killed. Russia has advanced and then retreated again from the area around Kyiv. But, of course, it continues its major assault on the Luhansk and Donetsk regions, perhaps its most strategic win, taking, finally, at a huge cost, the uh, southeastern city of Mariupol. Many, though, asking three months on, what on earth has it all been for? Well, with me to discuss that is Antoine Ajgovsky, who's a French historian, co-director of the Politics and Russians Department at the Collège des Barnadiens and director emerit emeritus of the uh, Institute of Ecumenical Studies in Lviv in Ukraine. He's also author of the book Russia, Ukraine, From War to Peace. Thanks very much for coming in and talking to us on the programme today. Three months in then, and it still seems almost incomprehensible to a lot of people who've been watching this war and studying it. What on earth it is all for? How can you answer that question? Well, thank you for this question, because really, with some of experts in France, but also in Russia and Ukraine, because I spent 17 years in Russia and Ukraine before working at the Collège des Bernardins. So I, I was working for the French embassy in Moscow and Ukraine. And when I came back, I understood that my colleagues at the French Ministry of Foreign Affairs were not really understanding what's happening since the annexation of Crimea in 2014 by Putin. The, the, I, I gathered experts from uh, Russia, Ukraine, and during two years we met. It's 200 of experts, mm. and we, what the agreement of all of us was that it is a war of civilization, but not between Russia and Ukraine. A war of civilization between a state that wants to become an empire for the 21st century, with a theology of empire, with the importance of the president as if he's God on the earth, uh, and on the other side, a nation state, uh, which is Ukraine. And this, th there is an analogy between France and Germany during the 20th century. It's the same kind of war. It's not only between two countries. It is a, a war between two visions of the world. And are those visions of the world those states' visions or are they Vladimir Putin's vision? Do you think? No, it's not only Vladimir Putin. This is where the, the problem is. When you see around Vladimir Putin, the patriarch Kirill Gundyaev, he's also in favour of this idea that Moscow is the third Rome, and that uh, the, the, the Russian church should uh, propose salvation not only to Slavic countries, but to the whole world. There is a, a war of civilization, as Gundyaev said, against uh, the democracies, uh, against the uh, you know, LGBT world, and so on. So for him, it, it is a Manichaean war. And it's not only Kirill Gundyaev, it's also uh, Dugin, and uh, Nikolai Patrushev, the, the, the previous head of the FSB, of the secret services. Um, so these people, they want to restore the empire. They are against democracy and they are against the Ukrainian nation. Medvedev, the previous president, he said we, we need to erase all kind of Ukrainity. You see? So this is why there is an American historian that I appreciate, Timothy Snyder, who speaks about a fascist state. We should say it. This is a fascist state, which, you know, makes a difference when today some people, especially in France, the President Macron, mm. tries to, to say we should not insult uh, the Russian president, there should not be humiliation of Russian state as if we were in 1919, but we are not in 1919. We are in 1941, when Great Britain was the only state able to fight against Hitler. So it sounds like, from what you're saying, you basically knew this was going to happen, and you were police, uh, produced a report saying that, didn't you? I mean, uh, and at the same time, was anybody listening? It sounds like the answer to that question is no. No, no. We, we, we presented this report with 10 proposals in 2019 in Ukraine at the French ambassador, Etienne de Ponsin. He said, this is very interesting, but this is not realistic. You see, for instance, we were saying that the United Nations are not working. There is no peace because there is always this veto right from the members of the Security Council. And we, we said we should 
give the possibility for the uh, UN Assembly to the nation states to overcome this veto right when there is no peace in a, country, in a, in a region. Uh, and, well, the, the, the professional diplomats were telling us this is not realistic. But we consider that, on the contrary, we think it was the best way to overcome the tragedy that is going on right now. If the United Nations is not reforming itself right now, that will be exactly the same fate as for the previous uh, League of Nations, La Société des Nations, uh, that that failed just before the Second World War. That could be the same for the United Nations. And this is why we consider that it is urgent, not only for moral reasons, but for, the, for, for international relations, for the United Nations to say to the Russia, you have signed in 1945 the, the, the Charta, the, the, the General Declaration of Human Rights of the United Nations, now, if you don't respect these charts, then you, you, you have no place anymore in the United Nations. It's obvious, isn't it, that um, the war has not gone as Russia planned it uh, to go. I mean, where do you think it's gone wrong? And, and do you think there's any regret even at this stage from Vladimir Putin that he started this? Because it doesn't seem to be really getting anywhere, does he? Well, uh, Vladimir Putin is understanding that he was not well informed because... Everybody was saying that he could take Kiev in three days. And on the contrary, we see that he does, is not able to take Kiev, but not also Kharkiv, which is a Russian-speaking uh, city, mainly. So it means that his vision of the empire, the vision of the empire is when you speak Russian, then you should be part of Russia. So this is his vision. And this is why he doesn't understand why some cities, not only Kharkiv, but that will be the same for Kherson, and it is the same for the whole Donbass, and the same for Crimea region, the people don't live only with the language. People live also with the vision, with a project, with a, a desire to be part of a, a, a democratic state. So he's not going to give up, as he is going to keep He's pushing. not going to give up, because he has a vision of the past. But if he knows it's going so badly, surely what's the alternative? I mean, he, he can't just carry on losing as many forces, as many troops as he has, but and just nibbling a tiny bit of land, surely, all the time. Well, you, you try to think with the Western rationalistic uh, uh, kind of... Uh, but he's not... Uh, uh, thinking in this way. He, he considers that he, he's already uh, old. He wants to go in history as Stalin entered in history. And um, he, he thinks his mission is to restore the empire of Russia, the greatness of Russia. And this is why he will go till the end. And unfortunately, we do not see people like Garry Kasparov by the way, who is living in the United States, who is saying it, it, it's, it's a failure. We need to restore a sovereign Russian state against imperialism. For this, we should say to the Ukrainians, we will give back Crimea and Donbass, and then we will fight with Ukrainians to restore the truth and to restore justice. And only then, there will be a, a free, sovereign Russian state. And I, underst I don't understand why there are some publications f last week in the New York Times saying we should give back Crimea and Donbass and, uh, and, and help Putin to go out from this conflict. This is not the right way. We should, on the contrary, support the opposition to the, to the Russian uh, state, Kasparov, Khodorkovsky and the others. Good to talk to you on the programme today. Thanks very much for coming in. Um, Antoine Arjakovsky, author of the book Russia, Ukraine from War to Peace. Thanks. Now, President Joe Biden